Hi, my name is Greg Suddy, and this is Suddy on Soccer, and I have had the pleasure to have this conversation with Jacques Ladisseur in a series concerning his book, Raising a Professional Athlete. Mm -hmm. Today, what we're going to be talking about is nutrition, and this is just an astronomical subject that, that covers all sorts of angles, Zach. Um, one of the, one of the um, concerns that I think a lot of us have is what's our family history and our health issue going into the next generation? Well, that's uh, that, that's a great question. And um, for me, as far as nutrition, man, I tell you what, um, that is one of my passions. Mm. I have always told people if I had to go back to school, that that's what I would study. Really? Nutrition. OK. And the family history is very important. Now, for a guy like myself, who my father left my house when he was when I was six years old. Uh, and so I don't know anything about the genetics or anything about his, his family history, who died of what or whatever. So I don't oh, know any my. of that. OK. Um, now, my mom. Um, you know, which is a big blessing. She just passed away at 97. Oh my. So she was very healthy. Yeah. I mean, big blessing because she was very healthy. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. So that's a big thing, right? But the understanding your family history is very important because if, if there's something going on with your children and you don't know your family history, that, it, you know, whether you have heart disease, cancer in your family history, right? then I, I think you're making a big mistake if you don't pay attention to that. Okay. Um, can you, can you, just elaborate on that a little bit more. I mean, uh, how deep does that go? I mean, how do we look for that? What, what kind of things can a family do to find what their family history is and that sort of... Well, one of them is pretty simple. I mean, if, 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 you, if you find out family members have died of diabetes, have died of heart disease, cancer, right. that, those, those, are, those are trigger points. And these are all things, at least most of them, are things that as a young person, if you know about it in advance, and if your parents are on top of it, nutrition can play a huge part in keeping big these deal. things at bay. Big deal, big deal, for sure. Now, um, one of the things that I was just talking to a guy the other day, I mean, he has, he has heart disease in his family. He hasn't been to the doctor in 20 years. Wow. Um, so now he finally goes to the doctor because he, he was wanted to check his blood pressure. Well, they found out, the doctor told him, look, you have heart disease in your family, in your family history. Yeah. You're 30 pounds overweight. You need to lose the weight, period. Wow. Now, uh, does that affect his children? Well, yes, he has a daughter that has a similar issue where she's it's not exactly the same but she's she's gaining weight okay um and they couldn't find out what it was again they took her to the doctor took a blood test and they found out that she 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 doesn't process food very quickly Interesting. and there's certain foods that she cannot have because it stays in her body and it, and it puts weight on her. and and obviously his family history is her right. family history right so that heart disease issue it's is there. a concern whether it's active now, whether it's something you can see now, it's something that there's a good chance that it's in the future. Yeah, well, the, the, the thing that we have with, with young kids playing sports is that obviously it's you, whatever, whatever they have, most of the times you can find that out pretty early. Gotcha. And then they can, they can make adjustments to their lifestyle and changes, and that's very helpful. Well, yeah, I mean, in sports, you're working the kid. You're, the, the youth is being pressed out to their limits of, of, of physical, you know, extremes. And so if there is something that isn't quite right, it's going to show up faster. It will show up faster. And again, it's better to catch it earlier. Uh, people need fuel. When it comes to nutrition, I mean, your car needs fuel, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody knows that when their car is out of gasoline, they need to go to the gas station and put in gas. Yeah. They certainly don't walk up to the beach and just put sand in the, in, in the engine. Right. So we know we know that you understand everything I'm going to talk about yeah, nutrition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand. I'm yep. just going to package it a little different. Right. right? And, and what you're talking about fuel, it's not just fuel. I mean, you can get low grade fuel for your car. Right. I mean, you can pour vodka in your car right. and it'll drive. Right. But it's not good for the car. No. So no. the same thing. That, oh, by the way, that same vodka probably isn't good for your fuel either. <laughs> but yeah, so talk about the, the, different, uh, the different things that, that we can look for as kids are being put to those stresses and those extremes to identify that maybe there's something we need to look at. Well, for sure. I mean, um, when, when I, there's a couple girls that I, that I was training from two different families and they both, when they get on the field, basically what I've noticed is that there was no fire in them. They, they, they weren't working hard enough. Well, my first thought is that, well, they don't have the passion for this <laughs> or, or they were lazy. And that's yeah. the same thing as parents that we think, yeah. right? I never even thought about there might be something medically wrong with them. Interesting. So somebody, somebody um, uh, asked the parents, say, hey, look, have you ever had a blood test for them? Wow. And sure enough, they had a blood test. They found out both of these girls had celiac from different parents, from different families. 
And what happened was with celiac, obviously, there's foods that you cannot touch. Interesting. I mean, if you touch those foods, basically a adverse condition in your body. And the, and the family didn't know that this was in their family line. No. Okay. So they're, so we have to assume. Well, that... I, we, we don't know if it was in their family line, right? But oh, the reality is based on the, the way children are behaving on the field, right. there was something wrong. Right. And there was enough people like myself who said, something is wrong, we need to check this. And somebody else said medically, then they found out. All right, so is there, a, is there a backside to that story? Did they start getting a better nutrition and come back out on the field with more fire? Oh, huge. I okay. mean, when, uh, one of the girls, when they changed her diet, everything changed about her. Really? Her passion, her, her work ethic, her, you know, her, her strength, her speed, everything changes. Wow, wow, that's huge. What what can we talk about as far as going forward with this as the as the athletes grow older and such? Well, as the athletes grow older, basically what, what's going to happen a lot of times is that when you see children, they're growing, their muscles are growing, um, they're they're growing, their whole their entire body is growing, and they need the fuel. Right. When they don't have the correct nutrition, they're more prone to muscle injuries. They're more prone to different bones injuries right. if their bones are not strong enough. Right. So that's what nutrition does, especially at a young age. How about in the household? And the household parents are kidding themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell parents all the time, you're kidding yourself. If you think you can continue with this on the same path that you've been, and then, and then you know, your kids are going to be very healthy, you're, you're wrong. You've got to change. Everybody in the household has to change. Those two girls yeah. that were diagnosed with celiac, they had to change. Their whole family dynamics had to change because if they didn't do that, then the girls would not get the proper nutrition in the home. Well, yeah. I mean, as a parent, if you come out there and you say, I'm going to have a spaghetti dinner, but you have to have, you know, something that, right. you know, beans and rice right. or whatever, you know, if, if, if I'm having all of the, the quote unquote, high carb, high calorie food, right. that's not good for me, but I'm insisting that you eat all of the healthy food. That's not going to work in the household. It's a contradiction. The, the, a contradiction. the, dynam the dynamic doesn't work. Everybody, everybody has to make changes in the home. That's great. And this is what this is what parents need to understand. You know what what you have at home is what you eat the most. Yes. Right? So basically, yes. that's what it is. And whatever you have there, that's what the kids are going to eat. Period. Now, if you change that, then something will change. But if you don't change that, nothing changes. What about the what about the the feeling that um, I know what I'm doing to myself? It doesn't bother anybody else. It's just it's just my body and and my story. How does that play out? That's that's the ultimate of selfishness. Interesting, yeah. It's the ultimate of selfishness. Yeah. Because every what you do affects other people. You know, when when it, it, when somebody dies, I mean, I just lost my mom. When somebody dies, it affects, it hurts people. Yeah. But there's 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 a there's a second part to it. When someone gets really sick, they can't take care of themselves. Everybody in the family has to make changes. Oh my goodness. Everybody has to make changes to their schedule. Uh, so they so they can participate, so they can help out, so they can be a part of this. So when, when the, the notion that whatever you're eating and and the way you are health wise doesn't affect anybody, that's very very selfish. And of course, the, obviously that goes to drinking or smoking or any of those unhealthy things. You know that in excess, you know, aren't just aren't good for the p person in the long run. And down the line, the family members are going to be the ones that are pulled into that hurt, right. pulled into that pain along with them. Exactly. Now, the, the, the thing, I, in my experience, all, with all the people I've dealt with, all the people I've coached, what I've noticed is that people, um, people need, need to raise nutrition to a higher level. Yeah. And until they do that, because until they do that, there's, there, there's no motivation to change. Like, for example, I, I heard about this guy who smoked for 30 years, went to the doctor. The doctor says, look, if you continue to smoke, you're going to get emphysema. You're going to get this and, and a whole list of things. And you're probably going to die. The right. next day, the guy quit smoking. Yeah. It's, so it, so what you're saying is once it's brought to the attention and they have that wow moment. Right. That, that this is what's so important for my life and also the lives around me. Correct. That, that I'm going to make this change. Correct. Gotcha. And you know what? We don't have to wait for crisis. So many people no, wait for crisis. No, exactly. You, like, like this guy who hadn't gone to the doctor for 20 years. I mean, he's waiting for a, a <laughs> crisis to happen yeah. before he makes changes. Why don't we make changes earlier? And with children in sports, we can do that if we got to pay attention and we got to understand that because it can reveal a lot more. And there's a strong relationship between, and we've, sp we've spoken previously about relationship. And there's a strong relationship between the coach and, and the player, the student, youth, uh, and, and then also the, the family. Well, uh, 
the, the coaching thing is, 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 is the thing that I, I get really bogged down with, uh -huh. right? Because as a coach myself, a lot of coaches out there who are coaching children, they don't want to tell children the truth. There is a way you tell children the truth, okay? okay. When you, when my, what I do is that I, I ask everybody to give me their goals. What's your goals and aspiration there for this go. sport that you're doing? Yep. I, I, I want short-term goals. I want long-term goals. When someone says that they want to they want to reach a high level in the sport, right. then as a coach, I have to point to them exactly what they need to do. And that gives you sort of an open door to have that difficult conversation. Exactly. Once they've identified their goals to you, you have a better idea of their long-term expectations. Correct. And you can help them and the family Correct. go forward. Now, nutrition is very important. Excess yeah. weight is the enemy of joints, it's the enemy of heart. So when 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 children who are eight are very quick, are very fast, are very athletic, and then all of a sudden at 12, they, they're no longer that because they're carrying excess weight. As yeah, a coach, yeah, yeah. you have to be able to speak to this person, to this young person, and help them. Not, not, not to back off and say it's too sensitive. There is a way to talk to people, right? Even if it's on sensitive issues, there's a way to get to people to do that. And coaches have to learn to do that because you're doing them a disservice if you don't talk about that. I would imagine that that also incorporates a strong relationship with the parents. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I've had this conversation with parents before. I say, look, this is, this is your goal for your child, and this is your child's goal, but then this is happening. Right. I mean, so what do you want to do about it? Do you <laughs> yeah. want to fix it, yeah. or, or do you want to just let it go? Do you want to make changes? If you want to make changes, I'd be willing to come to your house and help you remove some of the food that you have there. Wow, that's huge. And you do uh, individual training and coaching? Correct. Okay, so there it is. When somebody says they want to be fit, uh, when they come to me, they say, well, I want to be fit. Well, okay, fitness, you want to be fit, that's great. But there's several parts of being fit, right? The, the first part, obviously, you have to exercise. The, the next part, I mean, the next part, which, <laughs> which is crazy, people exercise, but then they go home and they eat the same, the same thing, and nothing changes. <laughs> they and haven't say, had that wow moment yet. <laughs> no, and I say, Joe, let me ask you something. I need to come to your house and take some of the food out. Hmm. Uh, we don't even want to donate this food because, I mean, look, if we don't want to eat it, why should we donate it? Right. So when when I come in there and yes. I say to him, Joe, this is what you need to take out, because if you don't take this out, exercising won't work because you're still eating wrong. And you know what? People don't blame themselves when something doesn't work. So if my training doesn't work, they're not going to blame themselves. They're going to blame me, the <laughs> trainer. And then they're going to find another trainer. But guess what? Nothing is going to change. No, no. Well, except for the name of the trainer. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jacques Latissure, this has been a great conversation. Yep. We're going to carry this a little bit further in Thank part two. Thank you very two. much. All right. Appreciate thanks. It. Greg Suddy, Study on Soccer. Thanks for watching. It's been great sharing with you today. This has been a passion of mine for such a long time. You can contact me in the email below and also purchase the books in the links below.